Hello, Dave Simpson, and welcome to the third episode of How to Play Like Peter Green. In this episode, I'm going to concentrate on vibrato and chords. And the first thing I want to talk about is chords that Peter Green would use a lot of. Um, early days, playing with Jeremy Spencer, when he was playing rhythm for Jeremy Spencer, it was a lot of just... Basic blues things, which again, you know, uh, if you know, if uh, anybody doesn't know, what I'm doing there is I'm playing the low E string, and then I'm fretting the A string on the second string. So it's kind of the low E string, and then I fret the uh, second fret on the A string. That's the first one. Then I play the E string again. And then, I, then I fret the fourth fret. Fourth fret. As you have, have you appeared, I can't talk properly today. Uh, fourth fret on the A string, and then play that. So it's the same pattern, so low E, A, low E, A. So. So that's kind of like a basic 12 bar blues thing. And then you would, what you would do is you'd move it down two strings. So instead of being on your E and your A string, you'd be on your A and your D string. So you'd play your A string, and then you'd fret your D string on the second fret. And then you fret, uh, then you play your A string again, and then you fret your D string on the fourth fret. So all together you get. couple of things for the turnaround. What I'm going to show you is a B7 just because it's a lot easier than doing the Chuck Berry chord especially if you're just kind of starting out or you kind of want to um, or or you just kind of want to be a bit more you know a bit, bit easier so to say. So a B7 we're just going to go for a lazy B7. So what you want to be doing is you want to be fretting the second fret on your A string with your, uh, your middle finger. Your first finger wants to be on the first fret on the D string and your ring finger wants to be on the G string on the second fret and you want to be killing the low E string with your um, uh, middle finger so it doesn't play and you have that. Think of it as a triangle, kind of it looks like a triangle so and then you can go to your A which uh, again and then back to your A and then back to your B and again, you know, it's basic 12 bar blues things and you can hear them as well. It kind of goes E, A, back to E, to B, A, E, back to B, and then it comes that repeat structure. Um, yeah, basic 12 bar. So basically that's kind of like early kind of chords what Peter Green would use. It's pretty straightforward because you hear it in, um, I think it's Shaky Money Maker where he does it. That's my impression of Jeremy Spencer. Terrible. Um, so that's kind of like that, but then you kind of, then he kind of would expand his chords later on in like songs like Then Play On and uh, on other songs where he wasn't doing basic 12 bar blues or just kind of blues soloing. You would get songs like um, Rattlesnake Shake, for instance, where he's using octave chords. Uh, what I mean by octave chords is you get the, say, because uh, I think Rattlesnake Shake's in A. I haven't played it in years, so I don't remember, but I think it's in A. For the sake, for sake of argument, we'll say it's in A. So what I mean by octave chord is you fret your fifth fret on your low E. So that's one note, and then your next fret, the, the next uh, string you fret, sorry, is your D string on the seventh fret. And I'm using my thumb just because that's a habit, but uh, I'll try not to use my thumb. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, fifth fret uh, low E, and then uh, seventh fret D string, and they're the only two notes you're playing, and they're the same note. Just one up the, the D strings an octave above, but I said I'm not going to go massively into music theory because it'll it's just it'll complicate things and that's just ridiculous. You're learning, and we don't want to overcomplicate things. So rattlesnake shake, he just moves that octave chord around. Be able 
to see what I'm doing there. Kind of going from a third to the fifth, third to the fifth, and then I go from the uh, eighth to the tenth, eighth to the tenth. And, um, and then also in Rattlesnake Snake, Shake Snake, Rattlesnake Shake, he uses fourth chords. And what I mean by fourth chords is that's two notes together. Uh, and what he does on that riff, well, I'll show you what fourth is. Um, if you fret the A string on your seventh fret, and then fret the seventh fret on your D string, and play those two notes together, that's a fourth. And, then you, and uh, that, that kind of same shape works on the A, D, and D and the G strings. And the uh, right, snake shake goes. So they're kind of other chords that he would use. He used fourths. I think it was kind of anything like really you could use basic chords. But then he had a bit of a weird, you know, the other funny ones like um, like Green Manalishi. Now this is where things get a bit more interesting and these are brilliant chords in Green Man Alishi. Um They're basically, and again I'm not going to go heavily into music theory, uh, they're basically um, just like uh, the root note with a major or a minor third on it. And, um, but I say, I'm not going to concentrate on that too much, I want to show you the shapes and you know, you, you can, it can be figured out later on. Uh, so um, the intro to Green Man Alishi, you kind of uh, it's an E chord, but what you what you're doing is you're playing um, your low E open. You fret your uh, seventh fret on the A string, then you fret your uh, fifth fret on the D string. So it's those. And if I get rid of the low E. Gives you that sound. It's a very sombre sound because it's a minor-y kind of thing. Uh, well, it's a, it's a minor, so so it's very kind of sombre sounding. So he'd use that a lot, and he uses that in O well as well, and um, oh, loads of things. He really liked that kind of thing. And then a, another one that he would do on top of that, the next chord after that one, um, there would be it's like a major. So what you're doing there is you're fretting your um, A string at the fifth fret, and then your B, D string, sorry, at the fourth fret. So them together. So they're different chords that he would use as well. So you kind of got, you know, you kind of got like a, a couple of different ones there to kind of like um, to kind of go along with. So you got your kind of the basic twelve bar blues. You know that kind of thing. You've got your uh, octave chord thing. Your uh, kind of minor and major chord. So, you know, they're, they're the kind of like. I would say they're kind of the main ones that you use, and then you get stuff like Albatross, which is. Um, well, actually, I want to do a lesson on how to how to learn how to play albatross. So I'm not going to show you albatross. I'm going to do that in a, in a subsequent video. So I want to do a whole video on that. So um, so I, I'm not going to show you that one. I'm going to save that. So tough luck. Deal with it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I mean they're the kind of like you know they're they're kind of the main chords that Pete would use a lot of. Um, say so, and but most of the time, like you know, outside of rhythm, he was just these kind of. <laughs> His blues kind of thing, um, you know, single note lines and, and his soloing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that, hopefully that's kind of like been a bit informative on kind of like you know the, the basic chords that Peter Green would use. Um, you know, I haven't waffled on too much. So yeah, they're, they're the kind of basic chords. So anyway, next part of the video I want to talk about is Peter Green's vibrato. So let's move on to. Vibrato. I hate that with Les Pauls. <laughs> okay, moving along. Talk about Peter Green's vibrato. And uh, there's basically three kind of points I want to touch on here. It's, it's it, There's not really a great to talk about vibrato. Peter's vibrato was either no vibrato, really like vibrato, or kind of 
aggressive vibrato. There wasn't any kind of like, you know, wide like vibrato or anything like that. But uh, he would do a little kind of, um, I'm going to put some reverb on. Um, he would do kind of a little bits without vibrato. <laughs> do his nice soft singy vibrato which is gorgeous and then he'd have his really stinging vibrato which is kind of a, more aggressive so first things first let's talk about the nice lovely singing kind of vibrato that he would do and it does it's just a gorgeous vibrato he has, and, and, and it, but again though he didn't use it all the time. It was every now and again, mainly on bends. Really, he kind of if you listen to certain songs, he wouldn't vibrato every note. So it's kind of important to kind of like keep that in mind. Okay, so nice soft vibrato. He's kind of like what you want to kind of do is bend the note up to the um, bend the string up to the right note, and then you kind of like what you want to be kind of aiming for is like a nice. I mean, you want to be on your neck pickup really kind of volume down, you know, to about two, three, very, very kind of quiet, depending on how much kind of like, you know, what, what, what you kind of amp set at. And you kind of want to be kind of going for this lovely kind of, think of it almost like a like singing kind of sound you want to be going for. You don't want to be kind of like going kind of like, like that. It kind of wants to be nice, kind of bend the note up and then start to shake it. Yeah, so it's really kind of, it's a voice. It's not so much kind of like just a, like a note. It's it, there's something else going on there as well. And, and it's important to be in control of that bend as well. You don't kind of don't want to be kind of like letting it rule you. You kind of want to be in control of it. You know, you don't want to be able to. You know, you don't want to feel the string kind of like falling out from your finger or anything. Nice singy soft vibrato. I mean, that's kind of like vibrato one, so to say. So that's kind of what you want to be going for there. So the softer, the better, really. So yeah. So that's uh, vibrato number one. Vibrato two, the aggressive one. That's uh, I can't say. In looking at Peter Green, he used it. I mean, he used it a bit, but not a great deal. He used the soft one or no vibrato a lot more because. I mean, I, I, I mean, I've said about his dynamics before. Like, you know, it's really important to play dynamically if you're playing like Peter Green. So, kind of like, you know, one minute, you know, <laughs> just literally like that. So, um, the aggressive vibrato, use it only at points where you really want to want something to stand out. So, kind of if you're kind of like just playing like through. And then you want the next bit to stand out. Roll your volume all the way up and just... And then roll it back down. You know, it really... And really shake the guitar when you do it. Like... You know, really give the guitar, you know, hell, basically. <laughs> Those strings have got all yanking, so to say. Um, you know, you really got to just dig in, basically. So, um... And the, the only way to get that really is to kind of like, you know, when you bend the note, just shake the guitar. You know, really kind of, you know, really give it some. And here's an interesting thing. Um, if you have your neck pick up on about eight, and you do that kind of nasty vibrato, you kind of, you get the Peter Green sound. If you put your you put your selective down to the bridge pickup and roll the volume all the way up, you get Danny Kerwin. <laughs> and I've cocked that up, but anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so yeah, you kind of get two different guitar players. But um, back to Peter. So um, so yeah, there's not much to really talk about vibrato. Really, just again, it's kind of the same thing as what I've been kind of saying. You've really got to kind of like go away and listen to him, like you know, to kind of. To kind of find, find out when he did things and when he didn't do things. It's kind of like really important to listen and really kind of open your ears and just like sit there and really take it all in. Um, so yeah, so yeah, no, so uh, hopefully you know, this video has been informative. 
And uh, we've got one more lesson to go. Uh, in that one, I'm just going to kind of do like recaps, kind of like uh, talking about dynamics, pickup selector, volume control, uh, the scales, using using the scales, you know, um, stuff like that, really. Just kind of a recap. And I'm also going to talk about the Peter Green pickup mod, which gives you that honk kind of sound. <laughs> Yeah, we need, need, you love, need you love some bad sound. I don't know what happened there. You know, that kind of sound. I'm, I'm going to talk, talk a bit about that and some of my findings with doing it on this guitar. So, hope this video has been informative and uh, hope you've learned something from this. And um, I'll see you again on the next one. Thank you very much and goodbye now.